Good morning, October 19th of 2024. It's been uh, raining pretty solidly for nearly 24 hours here at the Tractor Foreign Studio. It's early morning. It's dark yet, it's almost 7 o'clock. And this is what I'm going to be listening to all day, I'm sure. It's going to be a little too wet to be working outside, but we'll find something to do. Well, I decided it was, uh, since it's going to rain all day, it's probably a good day for a kitchen table project. So in this bucket here, right there, I've got the 1530 carburetor. So we're going to do that on the kitchen table. Nice and warm in here. We got the uh, fire burning there. Yeah, we'll have some uh, scrappy industries up there, whatever, keep us entertained. But we're going to uh, get this carburetor put back together. I had to wash it off a little bit, wash this all these carburetor parts off. I just put it in some Dawn and dishwater uh, in the sink, rinsed it all off. Now I got it uh, sitting on the wood stove, all the metal parts uh, just drying off. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, yeah, we spent uh, most of the day, we're just uh, poking around the house here and made pizza, you know, uh, scrolling on the internet. Got a good uh, bargain on some uh, DeWalt tools in town here. Some guy was just selling them. He replaces 18 volts with 20 volt uh, DeWalt system. So I picked up all his 18 volt stuff because, well, it's still good stuff. And, might as well uh, take advantage of it. All my 18 volt uh, uh, batteries are uh, powered out, they're, they're done. So I was at the point where I had to uh, bite the bullet and get a bunch of conversion things or buy brand new tools or whatever, just a bunch of money. So went and bought this guy's old stuff and now I've got uh, another four batteries. I'm good for a few years, couple, three years for sure. Anyway. It's evening now, dark out again, and it's still raining. Not as hard as this morning, but uh, we moved in. We've got uh, our little project here on the kitchen table. It's the uh, carburetor for the 1530. So we're just gonna get down and dirty on it and uh, put it back together. Okay, what we got going here, this is a old school hardcore carburetor. It's uh, not made of anything light, it's made out of cast iron. This is a Robin TC1230, I believe it is, carburetor. Made in Canada. Well, it's hot damn. We made something heavy duty, that's for damn sure. Uh, I went ahead and I uh, washed it out with the uh, diesel fuel and scrubbed it up a bit. I haven't really polished, uh, polished it up with the wire wheel or nothing, but it's all freed up now. The throttle mechanism, governor mechanism is working. So that's all uh, freed up. This choke mechanism is uh, freed up and it's working. That's all good to go. Inside the bowl, this is just a big old hollow bowl there. There's a big port that goes forward this way and there's the metering valve for the main jet underneath that we'll get to in a bit. But, uh, there's no jets or pumps or nothing too fancy in there. I went ahead and uh, cleaned up this uh, cap. That's where it says made in Canada, right there. 
solid cast iron. It does have the, I couldn't get this seat out. And I, if it wasn't gonna come out easy, I was just not gonna get it out because I don't have, I don't know where to get a kit for this particular carburetor. So I gotta reuse whatever is here. And the gasket fell apart. So I made a new gasket that's ready to go. Inside this uh, seat here, even though I put it in the uh, ultra, ultrasound, or ultra, ultrasonic, not ultrasound, but ultrasonic, and I took these uh, Q-tips in after, and even though I run it through the cleaner, it still pulled out a lot of this dirt. But I think we're good to go now because that valve just comes out of there as slick as you please. It didn't before, it would stick on something, just get hung up. I got it cleaned off of those Q-tips. And uh, it's working quite nicely now. This is the float. It's a uh, some kind of a cork, I believe, with a, some sort of a shellac or a, something rather covering on it. And it's in good shape, or it looks like it. And that's the way that float goes in. Now, here's our pin. Okay, the pin's in, and now this looks like it's uh, setting down a little high, but that's where it was set, so I imagine it was running. Working good that way, so I'm not adjusting it or changing it. And I think you can see that the valve does come out, and the valve does come out and it functions. So that's good. So that's all there is to that. Now we can uh, put that in place on the carburetor. Okay, there we got that put back together. We'll just set it upside down. Now this here uh, bowl drain, just gonna have to work with what I got. I'm gonna reuse the uh, gasket. Let's get that on there. Now this here main jet has been compromised. The adjusting handle has been compromised. This is not factory. That's been welded on after. And this threaded area here should have a brass gland nut with uh, string packing or something in it around the shaft here. But that's uh, gone. And again, I'm just gonna go with, uh, well, I don't have anything to replace it, so. I'm just gonna go with it worked at the time. So we're just gonna run this uh, little needle valve in. Had this little Mickey Mouse spring on there, I guess, to hold it in position, but. There, that's in. Now there is two more of these here uh, needle valves. The smaller one I think went here. No, 
maybe it's the bigger one. Yeah, it's the bigger one. And, uh, uh oh, it's the boat lost it. Good thing we're working in the kitchen and not outside in the gravel. There, that's all together except Four. We'll put it on its uh, end here. This is the gas line. I don't know if it makes any difference which end went in. And it goes tight right away. I think that's the way it goes in. I'm not going to wrench it down. I'm going to get it on the tractor and get the gas line lined up, make sure I do have it oriented the right way. I'm pretty sure that's the right way. So anyway, that's our uh, Robin carburetor. All functioning and ready to go. I'll take the wire brush to it and kind of clean off these, uh, the, the throat here and the mating surface for the gasket. Okay, that's it for, uh, working out the carburetor on the kitchen table. Okay, moving from the kitchen table back to the tractor this afternoon turned out to be quite nice. Actually, it's not raining and it was sunny earlier when I was doing this work. But uh, while I was after out here this afternoon, I did get the gas tanks put back on. They're not uh, tightened down by either of these straps yet. They're just sitting on there. And I put new belting from a two inch uh, strap for a, uh, holding down a load on a trailer. Use that for the uh, 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 strap in between. So uh, that should be all right. It, it'll have a gap in there so it won't rust and rot. All those three caps up there are loose. I, it took a little bit of work, but I've got that all loosened up. And down below, these tanks uh, were really actually quite clean. So down below, there's the access over in this area here, I believe, for the uh, gas uh, gas line to go into the carburetor. To so moving forward to that, my next uh, trick was to get the manifold back on. The manifold is in perfect condition, the uh, intake manifold. And I did have the exhaust manifold in place but it had like three out of four ears broken off. And by the time I wrestled with it, I had the fourth ear broken off. It was already cracked and whatnot, so it was just hanging on. So I cannot put the exhaust manifold on the engine. It's laying down there all broken. Consequently, I can't put this uh, mounting bracket here to run the uh, throttle governor assembly to the carburetor the only thing that i got that's functional is this bent wire that runs the choke and it's working but i won't be able to run the throttle or the governor on top of that out in the front here the pulley um i've got to send the pulley in to a machine shop and get it broached out with a new uh, uh, keyway on the pulley. That other, the original one is so hogged out. I do have a new uh, woodruff key for the crank, so that's gonna be good, but I'll, I won't be able to put that back on until I get that uh, uh, flywheel keyway broached out or uh, installed a new keyway for the, to go onto the crank. Interesting, uh, I can't really push it with one hand. Maybe if I get around to the front, I will. <clears throat> this here uh, just runs a flat belt. 
and I don't know if you can see that, but I can push it down an inch, inch and a half, and that's what keeps tension on the flat belt. Kind of a ingenious thing. So when I go to put it back on, I should just be able to push this on and push it down and slide the belt onto it, and it'll come back up and have tension on the belt. So that would be good there. But meanwhile, I still have to get spark plug wires. I only have enough length to do one wire here. I got uh, wiring on order. Plus, I'm going to have to get four new plugs. There's no use trying to deal with those old uh, spark plugs. So I'm going to get that coming tomorrow. And then uh, let's see what else we got here. I still have to get a friend of mine over welder to weld a nut or something. We've got to deal with that broken stud there so I can put the water pipes back on. I'm not going to put the uh, radiator back on. It's ready to go back on, but I'm not going to put that on until I get the pulley on. But I'm thinking when I do get some plugs and some spark plug wires, I should be able to belt this thing up again with the case, spin it over and uh, if not feed it gasoline, I'll spray some uh, ether into the intake and uh, see what explodes. That's all I got for today, uh, getting the uh, carburetor uh, uh, cleaned up, put back together and uh, mounted back onto the tractor. It's uh, one operation at a time. Every time you do something on these old girls, four more problems pop up. It's just that's, you know, fatigued uh, castings, uh, whatever. You know, there, there's just a lot of stuff that uh, needs to be addressed. So, going to wrap the video up here. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, people, for hanging in and following along. I usually do uh, cat uh, work here, but uh, I'm not afraid of uh, tackling on different projects, like different makes and models. You know, this McCormick Deering is a pretty unique uh, piece you know it's a hundred years old now I would just really like to get it going before uh, Christmas of this year so it'll be running within its hundredth year so if you like what you're uh, watching like and subscribe and uh, we'll catch up to you later